guys, this is a brand new dash cam that's just hitting the UK market. This is referred to as the 70 My Omni and the unique selling point of this dash cam is that this is an AI vehicle security guard which has the world's first patented 360 degree motorized rotating dash cam. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. So you can see here, you've got the dash cam just there. It's got a very nice design, so I'm just gonna take off all of the little pieces here. This is a very unique and cool design, and you know, I really like the fact that this rotates all the way around so you can get a 360 degree view. You've got a speaker just there at the bottom as well. Just above the 1.2 inch screen, you have a little microphone that you can actually record audio from. Now this comes in two main colors. So I have the one here in black, but you can also get this in a very nice quirky white and red color as well, as you guys can see here on the screen. This also comes in various different models. So I have the base model, which is the 32 gigabyte version. This has internal memory storage. So for some people that might be a lot more convenient rather than having to buy an SD card to put in there. But just as a side disclaimer, this doesn't have an SD card slot for you to expand the memory storage, but you can also get a 128 gigabyte version as the maximum. And there's also a middle version for 64 gigabyte models as well. All of the variations you can find and get the details for in the link found in the description below. The base 32 gigabyte version, which I have here, retails at about $140, and the 128 gigabyte model will retail at around $160. Let's see what else is inside the box. So you have an accessories box just here. Let's open this up. So you've got yourself the power adapter with two USB ports, the top one here, which is in red for the 70 my output. And you also have a USB-C cable to power the device when you do connect it to either the port on this adapter, or if you do have a USB port directly in your car, then you can just power that directly using the cable. And then you have a wire pry tool as well. Let's see what else is down below in the box. So you have yourself the user manual, gives you all of the information of how to mount this on your windscreen carefully. Then you can also download the app, which I'll be showcasing in this video using the QR codes here. And I'll also link all of the chapters for all the different topics I'm covering in this video down in the timeline. I would always recommend that you use this electrostatic sticker to put on your windscreen. It will make it much easier when you do want to eventually maybe remove it from the windscreen, not having to worry about any stickiness using the 3M tapes that are directly on the device itself. In addition to the box, you can also get the hardwire kit. And I do recommend this because if you want to really utilize the AI capabilities of this, i.e. the collision detection and also the motion detection, then definitely recommend setting up with the hardwire kit where you can connect this to your fuse and switches inside the car to give 24 seven power directly to make sure you're monitoring it like a full virtual security guard. So if you open this up, you'll need to connect this to the correct parts of your car's fuse boxes. So you have the red, yellow and black wires there that do need to be connected. If you are not familiar with doing this connection, then make sure you do maybe ask a mechanic and get some help with it. I'll link some information down below with how to install this if you are maybe capable of doing something like this. But bear that in mind that to use those AI features, you will need to hardwire the kit. So you have two buttons on the side, you have the power button, then you have the up and down arrows, maybe to cycle through the menu items. On the right hand side, you have the USB-C port next to the 70 My logo. And then you can actually open up the top slot here this is very stiff and I think they've done that in a very convenient way in terms of the design as well, just to make sure it covers all different types of cars. Now let's look at the key specifications on the sidebar just listed on the side here. Starting off with the resolution, this is 1080p full HD, so it isn't 4K, but I think that's absolutely fine because the last thing you want is to have very large files which give you less time to store it on the internal memory. This also has a 1.2 inch IPS display, which shows various different emojis using May X the Bear. And as you can see here, there are about 10 emojis that appear on the display itself. And then you also have nine scenario based emojis that also appear, which is a nice touch. Just underneath, you also have a glow ring on the actual device. That will indicate five different various situations, as you can also see listed in this screenshot. But as I mentioned earlier, this does have a 360 degree camera coverage. Each coverage that you do show with this gives you a field of view of 140 degrees. This rotates around 340 degrees, but with the field of view, it will give you a complete 360 to make sure you don't miss any blind spots. 
This can also shoot in 30 and 60 frames per second, which I think is great to get the most smoothest footage when you do have a lot of fast cars moving around you. And it also operates between 50 to 60 Hertz frequency. This also uses Pure Cell Plus S HDR, which is the name given to the technology of the image sensor that provides more clearer night footage, reduces sensitivity and noise, and provides a higher dynamic range. And one of the ways that it also gives you much clearer video at night is with the very large f1.5 aperture, which I think is absolutely great. And you'll see some sample footage shortly. Now to be able to get the 360 degree views, this also has AI voice commands built into it. So you can actually say various things to shoot from all different sides. For example, if you say shoot left, the camera will rotate left. If you say shoot right, the camera will shoot right from your right hand side. You can also shoot an emergency video, take selfie as pictures, and if you wanted to record backwards, then you can also say shoot vlog. That will start recording the video of the entire car and the cabin and also get the road behind you. I also mentioned that this does have AI motion and collision detection. That will require the hardware kit. And I will showcase a sample of how the AI motion works in this video as well. In addition to that, this also has GPS built in, which I think is great. Not only that, this also has ADAS, which is Advanced Driving Assistance System. What that means is this gives you alerts if you are maybe swaying your car into a different lane, if you're getting close to a car that's in front of you, or if there are cyclists or pedestrians coming in front of your car, this will give you an alert onto the screen itself and highlight the glow ring accordingly to that. Okay, so let's connect this for the first time and I'm going to connect the app as well. So I'm just gonna plug in the USB cable. You can see it's turned on. Please connect your app to activate the dash cam. So it's found the 70 Mai nearby. Click the power button to authorize. You have this very cool cinematic animation playing before you actually get into the app. But you can see already that this has started recording on the Omni. Okay, so let's go ahead in here, continue the setup, connect to the Wi-Fi of the Omni. You can also go through a tutorial if this is the first time you're using a dash cam like this and you just want to learn a little bit more. I would always recommend doing that just so you make sure you have all the knowledge. This will give you a guide on how to actually go ahead and stick this onto your windshield as well, which I think is quite important. You reposition the camera accordingly to your windscreen and that will be ready to start using. And there you have it. It's now shooting my studio here. You can actually change the position manually by rotating the camera and this final step lets you know that to use the parking surveillance i.e the ai motion detection and also the collision detection you have to use the hardwire kit and there you have it everything is there it's currently recording if you ever wanted to go in and take a look at things that have been recorded in the internal memory you just go into the gallery here then you can also share it and download it directly to your phone so that little clip that i've just played back I can go ahead and download. I can select between the 10 seconds or three minutes, which is quite a good amount of time to get any specific clip of the road when you have been driving. If I just do 10 seconds, I'll do allow, and it started to download. If you have a lot of videos, you can download all of them, select them, then it may take some time to download to your phone, but this is a very quick and easy way. Instead of removing a physical SD card all the time and transferring it, to just get all the footage that you want directly onto your phone whenever you need it. Just make sure to access this, you will always need to have the Omni on. So when you're in your car, you have to turn it on and then you have to use the app at the same time. Okay, so now there's nothing left to do except take this out to the car, set it up, and then showcase to you guys some sample footage from the daytime and from the nighttime, and maybe some overlay with some of the features from the app as well. So let's get straight into it. So just before you take the sticker off, just place it and test out to see where the best position would be, whether that's underneath your rear view mirror so it doesn't get blocked when you turn the camera around backwards. I would always recommend just turning the camera around, seeing if it's not blocked by the rear view mirror. 
Some car locations might be better just to have it on the right hand side of the rear view mirror. But have a look what works for you. I'm going to place it just below there, which I think will be the most convenient part. So let me take this off. You've got a little circular indication of where to place it as well. And this is heat resistance as well. So in the summer, when you have a heat wave, this shouldn't fall off. Here we go. Peel off the blue tape here to reveal the sticky part. Place it in the circle. There we go. Now the last step would be just to angle it a little bit straight. So you get the best view. There we go, that works. And the last thing is just to now connect the wire. The USB-C port is on the right hand side. So just bear that in mind. It's going to be the most convenient to go around from the right hand side of your car's trim. And this is where using the pry tool will be very useful. And there we go. I've got the wire going through underneath the trim on the roof there, just outside on the rubber strips along the right hand side driver door. They go down underneath the steering wheel and then they come out inside that trim there. I've hidden it inside and then I bring it up into the power port there into the USB. So everything is ready. Now every time I turn the car on this will turn on and start recording straight away. So let's go for a drive and take a look at some sample clips. Now, as you'd expect, the daytime driving is really clear and I'm shooting at 30 frames per second with HDR enabled, which allows you to still really see the information of other cars license plate, which is going to be the most important aspect of recording dash cam footage. Now just for a bit of comparison, this clip right now is shot at 60 frames per second which automatically disables HDR and for the most part you may not see noticeable difference but I would say it's just as equally as clear as 30 fps with HDR on. Now you can see it's a cloudy day and a bit dull. So I also wanted to showcase driving in other weather conditions. So here's me driving on a day where it's very misty and foggy and even still, visibility of license plates was readable at short distances. Sunny weather is, for obvious reasons, going to be the clearest so you could really easily capture footage and signs in a longer distance too. Here's a side by side of all daytime footage on the same road just to show you a bit of a comparison. And finally, night footage was also impressive, although you do see a little bit of glare from all of the light sources, which is kind of expected for shooting through a windscreen in low light environments, this doesn't sway away from being able to pause the footage to read signs and license plates close up. You just need to make sure your windscreen is as clean as possible of course. Okay, so let's talk through a little bit about the app. So I'm just loading it up. I'm going to go into the connection, connect to the hotspot of the dash cam while the car is on and the dash cam is on. Hit join. Okay, so if you go into the gallery option there in the middle, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can go into the timeline view and play back any of your previous videos from here. If you hit the categories tab, I think this looks quite nice as well and it just categorizes all of the different types of videos and pictures you've taken. If you go into that second album there called event, this is basically all of the times you've mentioned it to record the left side or the right side. If you go down to the second last option there, vlog, all of your vlog videos are saved in here. 
And then all of the photos that you've taken with selfies, you can also find in the photos album right there at the bottom, which I think is quite nice. If you go back and let's go into the settings. So hit the three icons on the top right menu item. Here you can find all of the customized settings under devices. So right there at the top, you have the high compression ratio. You can change that to low compression if you'd like. The recording resolution, I've got it set to 1080p 30 frames per second, but you can also switch to 60 frames per second from here. If you do change it to 60 frames per second, the HDR mode is disabled because it isn't compatible with that. But if you leave it at 30 frames per second, then you can enable HDR, which I normally would leave on. You can change the video clip duration from here as well, from one, two or three minutes. I've just left it as the midpoint for two minutes. You can also turn off the longitude and latitude watermarks. I've removed the 70 my logo, but you can also enable that from the watermark. Then there's plenty of other options here. If you wanted to set your default position of the camera, you can also set that from here by manually turning it left and right. The parking security, you can turn on motion and collision detection once you have hardwired the cables. Time-lapse photography, I've left off as well, but you can also enable that if you'd like to showcase particular things in front of the car. Surveillance light effect, you can also use this with parking surveillance. It shows different light effects on the actual dash cam as well. Just to remind you that there's uh, pedestrians or vehicles approaching you. If you go down to the smart travel category, you can also change the event video sensitivity. You can turn on and off the ADAS function from here as well, which I think is quite important. And then voice control has been enabled. If at any point you don't want to use the voice control for it to maybe shoot on the different sides, left and right, then you can turn that off. If you go into the sound settings here, you can also change the language. You can turn the power on and off prompt tone as well. You can set the speaker volume from low, medium or high. You can enable or disable the key tone and you can set here if you would like the audio to be recorded all the time from the dash cam. I think for most people, they would generally have this off just because they don't want to record the conversations that people are having in the car. One thing I really like about this under system settings is the screen standby mode. There's a couple of options here. Once you are driving, you can show the emoji animation screensaver like you can see currently on there, which is showing the pair link to the phone and the app. But what I've set it at is a clock. So as you can see, when you're driving, it just shows a digital clock here. So you can just see the time very easily in the center of your windscreen. I think that's a very convenient thing. But if you don't like that, you can also just have the screen off or you can have it as always on. So you will always see a live view of the road ahead of you in the actual dash cam screen. You can also set the time of when you want it to auto turn off when there's no movements. So five minutes is the lowest, but you can go to 10, 20 or just disable that completely. You can also change the system time and the date format to match your location. Speed unit, I've set it to miles per hour. And then you also have a few other settings down here to synchronize the driving routes and also reset to factory settings. Those are the main settings for the app, which I think looks great. One thing I like is this RS effects that you can find there once you go into your timeline. If you select that button just there, it adds a little overlay where you've got these kind of speedometers and all of the different informations of your drive just overlaid on top of the video. It's a nice cool effect and you can download it with it like this as well. So now that I've showed you the app, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the voice commands and see how that performs when I'm just speaking it. Shoot left. It does a 10 second recording of the left side. and it saves it automatically. Shoot left. And it goes back to center front position. Now you can say the next command, shoot right. And as you can see, you know, it's very quick and responsive to the commands. Shoot right. And then let's go ahead and shoot vlog. Get ready to 
Say hi to the camera. Shoot vlog. Get ready to say hi to the camera. And this is the audio quality coming directly from the microphone on this dash cam. And then lastly, take selfie. Gives you a little countdown, which I think is very nice. Daytime selfies are pretty decent, to be honest, and I think it's a nice to have feature if you want to capture that photo with you and your friends or family, if you're going on a road trip, for example. If you take a selfie at night, then because the inside of your car would be quite dark, you wouldn't get the best quality photo, but here's just an example of what it could potentially look like. So now that you've seen the AI voice commands, let's go ahead and test out the AI motion detection as well, once you do have the hardwire kit, how it looks and how it follows the person that's circling your car. So that's it guys, that's the AI powered 360 degree dash cam by 70 My. it's the Omni. If you have any questions around the capabilities of this, as always drop a comment down below. Make sure to check out the links, the latest pricing information, if there's any discounts and offers running at the time you're looking at this video. Everything you need to know about this is all in the website, so make sure to check it out. I'm very happy with this, it's one of my favourite dash cams I've ever had and I know this is going to be a huge success as it was just released and I honestly think dash cams like this are actually going to be the future. So that's it, make sure you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you like all things tech and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.